Welcome to Conversations with the Candidates, a production of iBerkshires.com and Northern Berkshire Community Television. My name is Tammy Daniels, and with me today is John Comerford of Palmer, who is running for Governor's Council in the 8th District as a Republican candidate. John, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Any opportunity to get out to reach the voters, I'm very happy to do it. Well, it's unusual because I said at the last conversation that I did was with Tara Jacobs, who is of course running as the Democratic nominee, mm -hmm. and I said it was the first time I had ever interviewed anyone running for governor's council. So now you are my second candidate that I have ever interviewed for Governor's Council. Well, well, and I think it's really great that we're finally starting to learn more about this position. So why don't, first, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm a, presently I'm a uh, veterans agent for the town of Holland. I used to do six towns, uh, but about a year and a half ago or so, I. I reduced it to just one town, mm -hmm. which is which is Holland. I used to be the vets agent for East District of East and Hamden County. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, a district is made up of multiple towns that kind of pay into a fund, so they can keep the veterans agent uh, the office going. And uh, I did that for about uh, twelve years, twelve or thirteen years. Uh, about a year ago or so, as I said, the, uh, it was time to let some of it go. Uh, I enjoyed, I helped a lot of people in the 12, 13 years I was doing it. I'm still helping, mm -hmm. but on a limited basis. Uh, I'm kind of semi-retired, but as you can see, if I'm running for office, I'm not, I, I'm not fully retired tired, yet. Right. Yeah. And you were an insure, you were an investigator? I was, an, I was a fraud investigator, investigator for the state. Right. Uh, the name of the agency, and I don't even know if it exists anymore because it was kind of swallowed up by, uh, by other agencies, but it, it was uh, the Bureau of Special Investigations. Uh, I was there for over, well over 25 years. I was also at the end, I, towards the end, I was the chief of investigations. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, invest I was stationed, uh, when I was in the field, I was stationed in Weymouth, Mass. Mm -hmm. I had a, an awful lot of great cases that I was able to uh, investigate. I, uh, you know, I would always uh, deal with the state police and, and, and uh, other state agencies. Um, and then uh, I ended up with the Office of Attorney General uh, as an investigator, zeroing in on, on Medicaid fraud. Um, at the, the Attorney General at the time was uh, Scott Hoshbarger. Mm -hmm. Great, great guy, really great guy. He, uh, he, uh, he actually called me uh, and said, would you come and talk to me? And I went and talked to him. And, that's that's when I ended up going with the attorney okay. general. So, so you've got you got some background. Oh, I have a with I've, state agency. Well, yeah, I have a yeah. I have a lot of background. background. Yeah. I have an awful lot of background with with the court system, mm -hmm. because once you investigate a case, the next step is to Go to, to make court. bring right. it to prosecution. So what you would do with that case once it was and you had it all all together you would bring it to the office, uh, to the district attorneys, a local D DA. Mm -hmm. Some went directly to the, uh, as an investigator in the field, some went directly to the Office of Attorney General. And they would determine if they were gonna prosecute mm -hmm. or they would tell you to bring it back to the local district attorney. I had many cases go to trial. I had many cases uh, uh, go into admission. Uh, I'm, you know, people would say, I did it. I'm sorry. What can we do? Mm. Um, I had <clears throat> I had one case. Uh, woman had seven identities, and wow. yeah, she was <laughs> she was she was very she was very cunning, and uh, she. Uh, uh, I found out not only did she have seven identities, she was getting seven welfare checks. She was also employed under under her real name, and I. After about a year or so, I tracked her down and found out where she was and where she was working. Oh and I knocked on her door and she, she almost fell on the floor because 
She had no idea, because I had talked to her, and she denied everything. And she, uh, she actually said to me, um, she doesn't go shopping anymore. This is a long time ago. She doesn't go shopping anymore. And I said, why is that? She said, because um, I steal. She said, I, I, I'll see a ham in the, in the freezer chest, and I'll, I'll steal it. She said, I, I let my daughter go shopping now because she's a kleptomaniac oh on top of everything else. You know? Wow. But uh, bringing that case forward, uh, it went to the Office of Attorney General. They said, bring it back to the uh, district attorney, which was in, uh, uh, in Quincy, Mass. I'm sorry, Hingham, Mass. Brought it to the DA. Uh, she ended up owing $180,000. The judge wow. said to her, what town do you live in? And she lived in an upscale community in the South Shore. And the judge told her to take a mortgage out in your house to pay that money. And 25 days later, her attorney and she came in with a check to cover the entire amount. The judge said to her, and as a woman judge, she was really strict. She said, uh, you're lucky I don't put you in jail for a minimum of three years. They, they put her on probation for like 10 years. But it was a really interesting case. Mm. <clears throat> my theory was if your name came across my desk, I'm going to get you at some point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find you, and I'm going to prosecute. Wow. I had about a 95% conviction rate. So I was very proud of that. you know. And uh, I was also, for a time, uh, safety officer at... at uh, Westboro State Hospital, uh, which put me in charge of campus police, including the chief. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then I went from that into, into, private, uh, into the private sector. So, uh, and just to say, you know, you said you're sort of semi-retired, you're yeah. coming back a little bit. So why are you running for governor's council? Well, that's a good question. And, yeah. and I'm kind of glad you, yeah. you segued into that. Uh, about two years ago, I read in the Boston papers, I, I read uh, all the papers I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. I read of this judge in Newton District Court mm -hmm. who uh, was in, uh, in session, her court was in session, and she had an individual that was um, before her, and I don't know what, the, what his uh, alleged crime was, uh, and the court officer went up and kind of whispered to the judge that uh, immigration is outside the door, out in the hallway waiting for this man. And she said to him, to this court officer, show him out the back way. Well, the minute she said that, she violated her oath of office. Mm. When you become a judge, when you become a vice president, when you become president, when you become a state senator, or a state rep, or a governor's council, you take an oath of office to basically preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, and to uh, do the job the way you're supposed to be doing it. Assisting somebody who's wanted by a federal agency is not doing your job. That, that upset me, and I said, I'm going to run for a governor's council. And one of the things I want to do as a governor's council is uh, get people to tell me, are they going to stay true to their oath of office? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can't guarantee, nothing's guaranteed, but uh, it, it was upsetting that she did this. By the way, she's suspended, it has been for two years, and she's been getting her paycheck every week. Of, uh, I think they're, they're at $187,000 a year. So you and I, the taxpayer, are paying her to, to stay home. Mm. Her case is with the federal, uh, with the U.S. attorney, but I don't see it going anywhere. anywhere. Uh, that upset me. I said, I said to my wife, uh, who, who I've been married to for 54 years, by the way, next week, I said, I'm going to run for governor's council. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a very strong voice, the people's voice on the council. And I'm going to uh, do everything I can to very, put the very best people on the bench. There's no guarantee. I've been in courts where where the judge was half asleep. You know, and I wondered, you know, why isn't somebody doing something about that? Uh, I've been in 
in courtrooms where judges were, you know, shouldn't have been there. I thought, you know, and I'm, I'm not Abraham Lincoln, but I'm certainly smart enough to be able to determine if somebody, somebody's mismatched for their job. So my, my goal is to, my number one goal is to put the very best people on the bench that we can. Yeah, and I, I, I watched your video on your Facebook page. You okay. have a Facebook page and you yep. have a, a website now. Yep. Um, and I, I, you had four things that you were talking yep. about. And one of those was questioning vigorously. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whether or not they would stand up to their oath of office. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm a very practical guy. I, uh, I don't go in with with beliefs that I'm going to change the world. I'm not going to go in and, you know, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm a Republican. If a Republican gets elected uh, governor, it's not going to, it's not a guarantee that who, whomever he sends to get uh, to place on the bench is going to get my, my uh, yes. It's not, not, not a guarantee at all because I'm of the same party. Or on the other side of the coin, if it just happens to be a Democrat, I'm not going to say no because that's a Democrat sending the person. I'm going to look at those credentials, and I'm going to question them vigorously about, um, about keeping their oath. To me, that's very important. When I went in the Air Force, I raised my hand, and I took an oath of office. And essentially, it was, I will, pres again, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And I meant that, and I mean it today, and I expect the people that we're elect, uh, selecting as judges do the same thing. Right. And so just to be, and to clarify too, the Governor's Council doesn't just confirm or, or approve forward judges. Um, there's a number of administrative judges, yep. um, the, the parole board. The parole the board, board, the, uh, the uh, Industrial Action Incidents. Board. Uh, there's, there, are, there are a number of issues. But right. I was zeroing in on that because that made me, uh, that that angered me that uh, this woman did this, and 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 I I have never mentioned her, her name because that's not what you do. Mm. Uh, you just mention mention the scenario. Uh, she there are a number of issues, and and they also approve uh, or are charged with approving state bills, state invoices for I guess assuming yeah. large purchases. You know, but there's a lot to it. And they meet every Wednesday, right? Either in person or on Zoom. Uh, I mean, yeah, Zoom. Zoom. Um, uh, I want to make certain that you, the taxpayer, you, the voter, know that they exist. I, I you'd be surprised. I'd knock on door, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere. And I've been almost every town, knock on a door, say, "Hi, I'm John Comerford. I'm running for governor's council. What's that? You're running for governor." No, I'm running for governor's council. What is that? Yeah. You have to school people on exactly what it, what it was. Yeah. And it started in 1700. Some, some, yeah, it's, it's, it's a colonial. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I can only imagine, uh, believe that uh, when it first began, the governor, the first governor of the Commonwealth, uh, said, look, I'm going to need help, you know, getting people, because we're going to have to create a judiciary. And I'm going to need help. And they, he probably appointed the first five or six people. And if, uh, over the years, it, it became an elected position, which I think it should be an elected position. Otherwise, it's an automatic approval if, if, the, governor right. sends, if right. the governor sends your name over to, the, to these people. Otherwise, if you don't agree with the man or the woman, has there been any other, any, I mean, you've obviously followed it closely now. Have there been any decisions by the Governor's Council that you didn't agree with? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's, uh, we, another uh, is commutation of prison sentences. Okay. And not long ago, the governor sent two names of people who were found guilty of murder and commuted their sentence. I would have said no. I read up on it, and I would have said no. You know, it's uh, oftentimes um, people in jail, they have nothing else to do other than, you know, they're locked up 24-7. So a lot of them find God, and suddenly they're, they're, they're changed. 
well, I don't want to put that person out on the street and put you in harm's way. You know, I don't want, I don't want, I would have said no. I would have said absolutely no. All eight of the current uh, governance council have said yes. I would have said no. Because I, I read everything about it and I would have said no. I would have come. Uh, well, one of, one of your points was in regarding commutation was that, that you thought that victims or victims' families exactly. should have the right to testify. Absolutely. And they, when it does happen, when, when a name does come before the board, the, the governance council, and it's uh, to let them out early, every attempt should be made to contact the victim and or their family. Uh, you know, if, obviously, if it's a victim of murder, you're not going to be able to get him or her. But the family might be alive. You know, they might be available. And somewhere in those records is the next of kin of, of, the, of the victim, the one that was murdered. And they should be allowed to come and say, yes or no, I, I, don't, I don't want this man out. I don't want, I don't want them out in the street. Or uh, even um, a district attorney that prosecuted the case should be told, you know, this, this person is here for commutation. Uh, would you please come and let us know your views? Yeah, there should be inclusion is what I'm saying. And um, they, uh, they have every right to say yes. They, they may say no. They may say yes. Or they may, you know, chances are they're going to say no. But, you know, and they should be allowed to speak to the board, to the governance council, all eight of them, and say, the, these are my reasons. I lost my husband. I lost my brother. I lost my son uh, to this, this uh, criminal. And they should be allowed to testify as to their belief of whether or not they should walk free, you know. And uh, again, to me, it's, you know, and I, I'm talking about, I've been talking about it from day one, going all the way back to January, that uh, it should be inclusion and it should be uh, as widespread as possible, uh, just you know, letting people know what's going on with the, with the governance council. Yeah, and you, 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 uh, you would definitely want it televised. That's, Absolutely. That's one Absolutely. Of the things, it should yeah. be televised. I know, because we know that it had been for a while, and then they tried to like, not do it, and there was a lot of pushback. Well, I, they voted I, to... I understand the, the issue was having to do with money. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, the governance council you know, didn't have the, the funds to put the cameras in and get, get things going, and I, uh, I understand that... Uh, uh, and what I would do is I would go to the governor. And you don't, you know, it's not like you meet with the governor every day. You're, right. you're not his counsel, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, it's, it's, a, it's strange. It's really not the governor's counsel, even though we call it exactly. the counsel. Exactly. Yeah. The governor's counsel. You don't, yeah. you don't counsel the governor yeah. on anything. You, yeah. you, it's, it's like advice, advice and consent yeah. of the U.S. Senate. Yeah. Yes, yes or no. But you, you, don't, you don't get to, you know, go to have coffee with the governor, uh, right. unless you're friends. You, you know, you just, you know, yeah. they, and, um, but I would, I would make an appointment to see his honor, and I would say, you know, what do we have to do to get the money to, um, who do we have to talk to? And I'll go and knock on that door. It might be the Senate president, it might be the Speaker of the House, the uh, Massachusetts House of Representatives. Or my local rep, and say, "Look, we need the we need the funds to be able to televise this. I, I want this to be as open as possible, you know, as transparent as possible. That uh, people, you and I, have a right to know what's going on. There. It's it's kind of like comes under the open meeting law in the Commonwealth of Mass. You know, you're not supposed to have a meeting." of, you know, the, the town council unless everybody knows about it. Right. You know, right. you know that. Well, the thing is that, you know, if you have it in Boston, it's easier not to... Yeah. Can, it'll be open, but who can go? Yeah, exactly. It's in Boston. Exactly. Right. That's why it should yeah. be on that screen right. over right. there. Yeah. It should be... You should be able to... And, and what I would do is suggest that the um, local, such as yourself, local uh, community access television, be told these are the scheduled events, uh, meetings, 
and please let your people know that it'll be on channel, what have you. And uh, at eight o'clock, uh, or you know, three o'clock in the afternoon on a on a Wednesday, and this these are the this is the agenda. We plan on uh, discussing uh, uh, Mr. Comerford's uh, application for the bench, or whatever whatever else yeah. is on the agenda. So how else? How and as we talked about, as we all know, nobody knows yeah. what the governor council does because it's sort of been hidden. Hidden. Yeah, I don't yep. want to say secret, but but hidden. Yeah, right. It's it was behind the, closed doors. Yeah. So. I mean, putting it out on the local television and allowing people to watch it over Zoom is great, but how do you, or are you going to be able to talk to people within a very large district, almost 100 towns, right? 101. Yeah, 101 towns. So how are you going to let your, if you are elected, how are you going to let your constituents know Well, it's not, it's not a constituent, constituency position. Yeah. In other words, I'm not there. I'm not a state rep. Right. That's their job, or a state right. senator. That's their job, but it, uh, I would let people know through you, yeah. through your medium, you know, through again local access, uh, and let them know what I'm doing. But it's not, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not like you go to the state house and you want to talk to your state rep. You knock on the right. door. That's not the, that's not the situation at all. You, it's not a constituency type position. Um, and, and nor should it be. It's, it's you're elected, uh, and I'm, I'm here, I'm elected, and I'm, I'm put here to determine whether people should be. Because otherwise you have, for one nomination, you have, you'll have 50, 50 people telling you yes, no, yes, no. Mm -hmm. You know, you, at some point, you have so to So what you're saying is that people are going to elect you, and they're electing you because they want you to use your good sense. My common sense, to, as my dad would say. Yeah. Use common sense. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, it, and it, again, it's not, like the, it's not like a town councilor, city councilor. You go in and you say, look, the, the stoplight on, on Main and South Street isn't, isn't working, and he can pick up the phone. It's not, the, it's not that type of position. And again, it shouldn't be. You know, you, you, you've elected me. You know, we don't get to talk to the president every day and say, Mr. President, you shouldn't yeah. have done that. Or Mr. President, will you please do this? You don't get to, you know, he's there, we, we put him there, or him or her, and you trust that they're gonna do the best job they can, you know? And it's a two year position. And if, right. you don't like, uh, if you don't like what somebody's doing in two years, vote for somebody yeah. else. You know, that's, that's why I, I'm kind of, uh, opposed to um, term limitations, because we already have it. It's called the voting booth. When you go in, you see the name uh, Fred Smith, and you think Fred's doing a good job, you vote for him. If you don't think he's doing a good job, vote for Tom Jones. You know, you, you already have that. We, we don't need it. Uh, you know, the only reason that the uh, president is four years, uh, or, or two terms, is because of George Washington. He said, that's enough. He walked away and said, that's enough. I've been here enough time to give somebody else a chance. But, uh, you know, if, if you like what I'm doing and I run in two years, please vote for me. If you don't, be my guest. Vote for somebody else. And I also want to bring up the fact that you, too, are not a lawyer. You're not an attorney. Not an attorney. There's people who, it seems to be, not everyone, obviously, but sort of traditionally there have been mostly attorneys on this. But there, you don't need to be an attorney. You don't need to be an attorney. Be, There's yeah. no age, right. which, uh, you know, it's like the President of the United States, you have to be 30, I think, 35 to, be, you know, to run for president. Right. You don't need that. You don't need to be an attorney. It comes down as... As we said, you said earlier, is it's common sense, you know. Uh, and I've been in, uh, um, I've been in many positions where I had to hire people, you know. And that's what you're doing. You're hiring this person to be a judge, or a court officer, or a, I mean, not a court officer, a probation officer. You know, you're hiring them. So you're going to get in front of your resume, and you say, well, gee, that's great, you know. But you don't need to be a, a lawyer to be able to read. You don't, you don't need to be a lawyer to make a determination whether you think this person is suited to the bench, you know? So speaking of that, beyond, beyond the, I mean, because you did talk about improving vetting. Do you think, I mean, you said improve vetting. Do yeah. you think that 
the vetting is not done well enough, or no, it, I, or I, it could I, be done, or how could it be done better? Well, it, when I said that, yeah. uh, it had to do with uh, being upset about this judge. Okay. okay, somebody should have said along the line, you know, whether it's the, it's the the, the uh, judicial nominating committee that submits names. Somebody should have said that. Somebody along the line should have said, "Will you? You're going to take an oath as a judge. You're going to take an oath as an assistant clerk. Clerk, is it your intention to stay with your oath, stay true to the, your oath, as this judge didn't do? I, as I said earlier, this judge, the minute she said, "Show the man out the back door," no matter what was going on out, outside. Mm -hmm. And it's not her business that the federal government wanted. It's not her business. They're there for a specific reason. They weren't upsetting. They weren't upsetting her, her courtroom demeanor or decorum. They were waiting outside. They, you know, they were kind enough to wait outside for the individual. But to, for them to, somewhere along the line, somewhere there should be a passage, you know, uh, and they're all attorneys that are uh, nominated. Would you you take an oath of office, and that's what I'll ask. You're going to take an oath of office uh, uh, for this. Should you be appointed? Do you intend to stay true to your oath? They're yeah. going to say, oh, "Of course, of course they are." Yeah. They're going to say, "Of course they are." You know, but you keep probing and probing and probing. And they're going to say something. They're as smart as they are. They're going to say something that's going to trigger, and that, that might say to me, "No." I'm not going to vote yes for this person. So, what else do you look? Would you look for in somebody in an administrative position, an administrative judge or a judge on the bench? Beyond, is there anything beyond simply saying I'll follow my oath? Well, yeah. Are yeah, you going to follow the Constitution of the United States? Are you going to call? Are you going to follow the Bill of Rights? Absolutely. Uh, are you going to? Um, are you going to s treat people with respect, no matter who walks in the door? You know, rich, poor, black, white, doesn't matter. Are you going to treat them with? I've seen judges that were, as I said earlier, I, I said to myself, my God. And I'm sitting in the, in, in the background waiting for my case to be called. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, um, p judges that I thought, how did you get here? You know, how did you, who did you know? Because in the old days, it was not what you did, it was who you knew. You know, it wasn't what, it wasn't what you, how, how intelligent you were. Uh, but how did you get here? And, you know, and I can't sit here, Tammy, and say, this is what I'm going to do on every case. I can't, I can't do that because everyone that walks in the door at the State House looking for, to become a judge is going to be different. And every, every scenario is going to be different. And every, every uh, uh, line of question is going to be you're not gonna, you're not gonna, You're not going to have a, a set question, you can't, because, you know, this, this person may have gone to Harvard, this may have, may have gone to BU, or New England School of Law, or uh, Western, uh, Western New England School of Law, you know. Uh, it's, it's, as I will, I will question them as I see them, okay? And, and again, am I going to be right all the time? No. If I were, I'd be running for president of the United States. <laughs> I'd be, Presidents aren't right all the time either, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. But, you know, I think it was, for me, it was time to, yeah. to step up and say, you know, and you don't, I, I've knocked on many doors in a number of, numbers of communities, and I said, thank you for running. Thank you for running. And, and again, going back to the original um, and schooling them on what the governor's council is, you know, and I thoroughly enjoy it. You know, I I, I take the time to explain it. So, though. so what what else are you hearing? I mean, you've been you've been knocking on doors. Yeah, I've been going to. Oh, it's about time. Yeah, yeah, we gotta get we gotta get we gotta get uh, somebody in there that has some, and it goes back mm -hmm. to what my father said. But somebody said it to me the other day, common sense, mm -hmm. common sense. Uh, I'm hearing that. Uh, they're not liking what's going on in the state. You know, by the way, I, wanna, I wanted to say a couple of points if I could. Sure. Um, uh, I'm 100% uh, uh, backing the blue. I, and I, 
I don't even like that term. I back mm -hmm. out police officers. I, I back them 100%. Uh, are, they, uh, are they right all the time? No, absolutely not. 99.99% are great cops. I don't care if it's the state police, the FBI, the local PD here in North Adams, where I live in Palmer, the Boston police, they're, they're great people. You know, they, do, they, they put on their uniform every day and they have one intent to keep you and I safe. And I back them 100%. And, and I will continue to back them. Um, again, are they all good, good guys? No. We've seen a few that mm -hmm. shouldn't have been, just like I, I'd seen the judges that shouldn't have been on the bench, we, I've seen cops that I would shake my head and say, you know, why? How, how, how did you get there? You know, why isn't somebody reining you in? I, I've seen that. I grew up in the city, and I've seen that a lot, you know. But I back, I back the police officers 100%. I'm a former um, uh, uh, deputy sheriff here in uh, this county, um, I was uh, I was made one by uh, Sheriff Carmen Massimino. Uh, good guy, did a good job. Built a new jail. He he went in. I guess he was a, uh, in Pittsfield. He was a local he was city councilor, and the, and the previous uh, sheriff had passed away, and the governor made him the sheriff. And he he took it and ran with it, and he he did a fine job. And uh, when he got ill, he didn't tell anybody he was sick. Mm -hmm. he, just, he just stepped down from his position as sheriff. He was a good guy. He, uh, uh, but, you know, my background is that, and I, and I lean towards law enforcement, mm -hmm. but I absolutely endorse uh, a, a, a enabling the police to do their job. And I don't want to get you off your, your uh, No, that's fine. Your route. We're here for you to discuss things. Okay. So, you know. <laughs> and we're doing it. <laughs> Is there, uh, oh, and also I want to bring up the fact that, you know, in Berkshire County, we sometimes feel like we are the westernmost of Western out. Massachusetts, yeah. right? Yeah. But you are, so you are familiar with, we talked about that a little bit before we went on the air, you are familiar with Berkshire County. Oh, absolutely. I you love know, it here. It's beautiful. Been, yeah. Beautiful. You said, you actually said all the way from Parma, and I said, no, <laughs> no, it's not all the way. I'm here. It's in Berkshire. Berkshire is yeah. beautiful. Um, and I used to come here, uh, and I, as I told you before, yeah. I used to come here and, and to Pittsfield, North Adams and Pittsfield, once, at least once a week because I was in charge of security. I was in charge of the people that were providing security at the Social Security mm -hmm. office here right. and, it, and the federal building in, uh, in Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. And I'd go there once a week, and I enjoyed it. I loved the ride. It was, you know, riding in the Berkshire, the beautiful, yeah. you know. So I'm familiar with it, and and I think what you you're getting at is, is will the Berkshires be left out? The answer is no. Okay. Absolutely. We always have to ask that of everybody. No, no, it's okay. That's okay. No, it won't be left what, out. What are you going to bring to the Berkshires? Well, you know, I'm going to bring me to the Berkshires. Okay. You know? uh, and my wife, who's sitting over there, I'll bring her yeah. too. Um, but you know. Uh, I knocked on the door the other day, and somebody said, in, in one of the towns, and I, and I you, you excuse me for not knowing, because I'm in so many towns, you know, and it kind of all melts together. And somebody said, I never had a politician knock on my door before. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow. I said, you live in this? It was, it was a local, local town. Not even a city council, never, never had anybody. He, and he said, you're going to get my vote. And I said, well, that's great. But, you know, once I'm here doesn't mean I'm going to forget about uh, the Berkshires mm -hmm. or f forget about Pittsfield or North Adams or Adams or, or, or Washington or Florida or all these great little towns. Russell, another great mm -hmm. little town. Um, you know, I'm here and I'll be here again many okay. times. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we round up? You want to make we your pitch? We get to that pitch? point. We're at that. Well, yeah, we're at that point. We have a few wow. minutes. So okay. See, I said they always said. Yeah. They always go long. You will. Uh, have we already gone long? Not really. Not yeah. really. We're, we're, we're pretty much on schedule. With okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm bringing the trains so <laughs> in on time. Are we? No, I want to. I want to tell the people in in uh, your viewing area that my background is law enforcement. Mm -hmm. 
uh, as a former investigator with the state and uh, as a uh, uh, still a mm -hmm. veterans agent. By the way, through the years, I've, I've helped hundreds and hundreds of veterans. I, uh, I, uh, I had one gentleman walk in my office in Munson, and he said, John, I just discovered, I've just been notified by Social Security that I'm dead. Mm. And I said, what do you mean you're dead? You're standing here. He said, no, they sent me a letter. So he was on, he was on uh, uh, VA disability at the same time. And he said, they, they, sh they cut this check off, they cut this check off, he said, I have nothing. So I got him some money, uh, and I said, is there anybody I can call for you? He said, I said, here's what you do, you go to, you go to the VA, present yourself, present this letter, present your, your VA uh, uh, award letter, and show them who you are, and get them to, because all it is is a little computer thing, all you gotta do is, mm. and he, about a month went by. I, get, I got him a check for whatever it was he needed, and uh, I took it out of my budget. I, I didn't ask the town, I, ha I have a budget, but I didn't ask the town for money. I took it right out of my budget, and I think it was something like $2,500, cut him a check, and he said, when I get restored with Social Security and uh, with the VA, I will bring back this money. A month went by, I hadn't heard from him. A month went by, and he came back all smiles. He said, I'm, here I am alive and kicking again. And he gave me the check back made out to, to basically to my budget, you know. Mm. And I was very happy to do that. I'm, I, I help, unfortunately, I helped bury an awful lot of veterans through the years. People who couldn't pay for a, a funeral. People who couldn't, uh, you know, get a casket for, for mm. their loved yeah. one. Um, and it's part of it's part of the job, you know. Um, but anyway, I, I wanted to I wanted to let the people know I'm on the ballot. I am a Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I use what my father would call common sense in in my everyday life. I I married 54 years. We have four kids. They're all adults five grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. And when my granddaughter told me I was gonna be a great-grandfather, I said, I'm too young for that. How, oh. how could that be? You know, then my other granddaughter came along and said, oh, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> so we have two little boys, Carter yeah. and, uh, oh God. Brooks. 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 <laughs> yeah, Brooks, Carter and Brooks, yeah. you know. And, you know, uh, they're gonna be, they already are. They're the best of friends because they, they live close by, you know. But I said, I'm, I'm too young to be a great grand. They're old people, and I'm not there yet. yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not there yet. But I'm, I'm going to ask, through your, through your um, generosity, I'm going to ask for the vote of the people in uh, this county. I'm going to ask for the vote of the people of uh, North Adams and Pittsfield and, you know, the Berkshires. There's 101 towns in the district, and I would like to be uh, be elected by all of them. And I would certainly appreciate your, your efforts. And by the way, if you have any uh, questions, you can uh, get in touch with me via the Facebook page. It's www.comerford4, the number four uh, governor's council. And I'd appreciate hearing from you. And I, I'll get back to you. Uh, I, I, I have a long habit of getting back to people right away. So thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, that is John Comerford. He is the Republican candidate for the 8th District for the Governor's Council. And I'd like to remind everybody that Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. Please, please vote. It is your civic duty to vote. Um, thank you for being with us thank on this episode. Much. And I'd like to thank uh, Northern Berkshire Community Television for allowing us to do these in the studio. And goodbye for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. See?